Good morning, Washington. Good afternoon, all the ships and see. How y'all doing, everybody? Big day here on Dave TV. You know, one of the things I do like about the Washington Post is the day after, actually two days after the election, when they get all the results tabulated and the final stuff comes in, they do a really nice election special section on these national race thingy dingies. And this was a good one. This an excellent section. You know, it's uh, 48 pages. Not a lot of ads, but it has a lot of cool stuff. And it's, it's you know, if you, want a, if you want a nice, really good summary of the entire election, president, house races, senate races, the whole shebang, this is really good. The Post does a supremely good job on this. However, however, I found an error. I found an error. <laughs> In Virginia, they wrap it in. Yeah, the Post ought to know better. They're doing Virginia here. They're own, we're in Virginia house. Dash, dash. Republicans held their eight to two dominance in the house in the state's house delegation. That means there are eight Republicans and two Democrats in the house de delegation. Okay, according to the Post. Well, you know, I know that uh, you know the, those two are Connolly here in my district, Northern Virginia, and uh, Jim Moran over there in Arlington. But you know what? You know what? There's actually a third, Bobby Scott in Richmond who won 81% of the vote in District 3. <laughs> three! There are three Democrats in the Virginia House delegation, not two, as the Washington Post reported in its election. To think, no, I know that. I knew that with that, and I'm not even a political reporter. I knew they had three. Um, so anyhow, Post screwed it up again. I'll tell you, this paper just, you know, they uh, even though this is an excellent section, and I highly recommend it, and it's very well done, and good stuff in here. They did, they did uh, get a Virginia, a Virginia thing wrong. Uh -uh. <laughs> Oy. It would have been nice too if they had taken these, uh, these state breakdowns like Virginia and Maryland there of the presidential race and the Kane race, Kane Allen race, if they had made those a little bigger and put them in color. But you know, what's, that's just me. What do I know? Okay, the big news today, big news today, Larry O'Connor is now the new uh, morning show co-host on WMAL. Uh, I'll tell you, what's my take on that, is if everybody, anybody cares. Can you see me? Can you see me? Am I too dark? Let me see. There we go. Hey! Um, I, I've been listening to Larry. He's been co-hosting on the show the last couple days. He did their election coverage the other night, which I didn't listen to, but I wrote about it, so. Uh, I like. I think he sounds great. He has a nice voice for radio. He has a nice. He sounds great. I think he'll be great. Um, the only thing I find a little mysterious about WMAL's choice is I really, really think if WMAL is going to go for the, if they're really sitting there looking at the total station, they need to mix it up more with with opinions. You know, Larry is a conservative, just as Brian Neiman, and it seems to me, and Brian, excuse me, Brian Wilson. I don't know about Brian Neiman. But anyhow, Brian Wilson, Larry O'Connor are both conservatives. And, you know, they, they complement each other. They agree with each other on a lot of things. You know, Le Wilson says something and Larry jumps in and agrees with him and they bolster each other. And that's fine, but it doesn't make the most compelling radio. And I'm telling you, one of the things they're talking about with the Republican Party these days is the party needs to be more diverse. They need to appeal to more than just white men. And I think the same is true for WMAL. They need to appeal to more than just white conservative men. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with having a conservative leaning show or have conservative hosts on your station. I have no problem with that. But they really need to mix it up more in the mornings. They really need to have somebody who's going to clash with Wilson a little bit. You know, more of a, li a liberal conservative mix on the show. You know, and that makes better radio. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm, I listen to WMAL these days. I put on the morning show when I first get up, and I'm usually tuning out after 20 minutes, half an hour, because it's just the same. These two guys basically <clears throat> agreeing with each other. It's and, and that's fine, but it doesn't make the most appealing radio. It's not fun to listen to. Um, you know, it's it's stuff like that. You know, it was like listening to Don Geronimo all those years, and he's a wonderful host, and I really enjoyed his show, but. What you liked about Don Geronimo was how he would go right up to the emotional cliff and sometimes go over it and watch, you know, watch the wreckage almost. 
I really kind of want to hear more exciting stuff like that on WMAO's morning show. I want to hear more mix-up stuff. They, don't, they ought to have a Republican and a Democrat or a liberal and a conservative good-naturedly going at it. You know, I don't want to hear them yelling and screaming at each other and storming out of the studio, but to have some kind of a mix. I mean, somebody like Mike O'Mara actually would have actually been a better choice to me. You know, I you know I know he's out of left field, but he's a liberal. He you know has O'Mara he has um. Obama signs on his front yard and people send nasty letters to him. But that would make it an interesting show. Uh, you know, a conservative and a liberal going at it every morning good-naturedly. That would make an interesting show. You know, I think Larry will be fine. I think WMAO will be fine. But I, you know, the station needs, if they're really looking at getting better than 15th, 16th, 17th place, uh, you know, they did get a little surge from the election. I'm sure they'll probably they'll pop up a little bit. But if they want to get more younger people listening, if they want to get more blacks and, and a mix-it-up station, more younger people, more Hispanics listening, that Latino, they need to mix the whole station up and, and give us more diversity in the opinions. Right now, it's all white men. You look at you look at Brian Wilson, you look at the new Larry O'Connor, you look at Rush Limbaugh, you look at Sean Hannity, you look at... Mark Levin, you look at uh, you know, Bachelor, Bachelor in the Evenings, you look at that overnight um, trucking network shit show, the Midnight Network. I mean, it's all white men all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, man. You know, put, you know, at least Mary Catherine Ham, even though she was a conservative, she at least had a female, you know, finally, at least a female on the station. I mean, it just seems like in this day and age of 2012 with a black president and, you know, we, we could at least go beyond and have more than an entire white male programming staff at a radio station. It just, you know, you're, the, you're trying to build yourself as the top talker, news talker in the Washington market. Uh, look at, look at, if you look at the, I, I'm not going to find the page here. If you look at the presidential race, you look at it, all these counties, Montgomery, Fairfax, Arlington, Charles, uh, Prince George's, Howard, uh, Prince William, Arlington, Alexandria, all went for Obama. That's the core of uh, D.C. Uh, that's the core of WMAL's listening area. It's heavily liberal Obama country, you know? Now, that doesn't mean there shouldn't be a station here that's kind of, you know, nudging us in the other direction. I'm not saying that, you know, there's anything wrong with that. But, you know, if WMAL wants to get... Um, if they want to get, you know, looking at a regular place in the top 10, maybe hitting it a little more at WAMU, which I think maybe they should be going more for WAMU because it's more of a long-form talker than WTOP is, they should be mixing it up more. You know, I don't know. I, I really kind of think they should have picked a liberal or at least somebody leaning a little more to the left for that morning show. Two conservatives on the morning show. It's just going to make it dull and predictable. And you know what? I'm already finding the show morning dull and predictable. I listen 20 minutes, half an hour. I've heard it, been there, done that, and I'm over on Morning Joe. You know, I'm, I'm watching Morning Joe. We're listening to it on XM Satellite Radio a lot more than I used to because <clears throat> I don't know, man. I want I want it mixed up. I want a little more antagonism. I want a little more a little more sparks there on that morning show. And, uh, you know, I, I, as I said, Larry sounds fine. He has a good radio voice. He, he, he's good on the radio. He's got experience on it. You know, nothing wrong with that. But uh, I don't know. What else are we going to report? You know, that's about it for today. Uh, uh, dub, dub, dub. Jessica Jordan, we told you this already. Jessica Jordan uh, is replacing um, 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 Bill Redlin over there as the afternoon host. She does the kind of the filler segments and the news news stuff there at WMA, WAMU, American University's News Talker Public Radio there in uh, uh, Jess and, 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 and Jessica Jordan. Jessica Jordan, is that her name? Yeah, she comes from um, Radio, Radio Moscow. No, Radio Russia. You can hear Radio Russia in English on 1390 W, um, I still call it W-E-A-M, W-Z-H-F, here in the Washington area. And I also believe that they do that RT thing, don't they? That Radio Russia Today thing you see on cable TV in, in very American English, by the way. <laughs> All right, that's Dave TV for today. Thanks for watching. This is the 8th, the big old 8th of uh, November 2012. 
Uh, Pox Robisco.